What's up, world? It's your boss, International Zomega Millions. This week's Sunday sermon is the Rona fallout. Now, right now, everybody's main issue is when are we going to open back up? Some states have some places like New York. It seems like the time just keeps getting pushed back. My fear in New York is that, or just in general, that there's going to be a Rona fallout. Take my industry, for instance, the barber industry. Or just everybody's industry. I'll give a few examples. When it's time for people to start taking public transportation to go to work, to move around in the city, I heard it being said something about you know, I have to make an appointment to get on the train. Can you imagine, I mean, can you imagine what kind of time that is gonna take? How many people travel in the course of a, a day, five days a week in New York City I mean, the trains are so crowded that it's extremely uncomfortable on a regular day. So one, imagine people trying to get on the train, the people on the train feeling that there's too many people on the train already and maybe pushing people back off the train or telling people don't get on, there's too many people in this car already. or if they actually implement the appointment system, how are people going to be able to get to the day, through the day? There's not enough appointments they could possibly make to get the people to and fro in New York City, especially not the nine to five people. It's in this, that's gonna be impossible unless someone's gonna work once or twice a week. Barbershops and beauty salons, for instance. Can you imagine some people, one, not wanting to wear masks. Two, not wanting their temperature taken at, at the door. Just being difficult. People not wanting to let their child in the shop to get service while they wait outside. People not respecting appointments. People walking up to the door, although the plan is to lock the door and do appointments only, walking up and knocking on the door and expecting people to open the door to answer their questions. New York City is already a super agitated city to begin with. Crowds in anything from the local bodega to grocery. I see lines outside of all the supermarkets. And that's the way we stand now. So just imagine when everything is opened up. People are having to wait outside to go into a hardware store, a furniture store, just... The buses, what are we going to do on the buses? Are we going to count the amount of heads that are going to be allowed to get on the bus? And what are we going to do with people who try to attempt to get on the bus that don't have a mask? And then the bus driver says, you can't get on the bus because you don't have a mask. And the person says, I'm getting on the bus. You know, just imagine the fallout that's going to happen once we do open up, open back up. What's going to happen if people start getting sick again? Are we going to close down now for maybe six months? Um, there's a lot of information out there. We don't know what to believe at this point. All we do know is that people are getting sick and people are dying. They don't have any concrete evidence or a consistent answer to the questions that why some people are testing negative with all the symptoms. Um, first, there was no children. Now there's children. First, it was the elderly. Then it became everybody. And now they said the, the virus that's in New York is from Europe. It's not from Japan. I mean, China It's not from China. It's from Europe. The virus that's here in America. So getting open back up is only small part of the problem especially in my industry with barbers we have to order disposable capes 
um, okay, everybody's shooting these videos and showing their, their shops getting disinfected and they spraying the stuff over everything. Are you going to do that every night? No. So what does that mean? You get your shop sprayed and the first day you open back up. That's beautiful. But one day later, it could be contaminated. So I don't imagine people being able to afford to spray down their shops every day, every night. It's impossible. People not, are not even capable of cleaning their shops every night. So it's just a, a lot of unrealistic things going on. They want uh, chairs six feet apart. Okay. How do you do that in a crowded city like New York where space is limited? How do you put barbers six feet apart? And then you and your client is not going to be six feet apart. I see some barbershops saying that they won't do face facial hair. What if the guy said, well, if you're not doing my facial hair, then I don't want to cut. And some barbers are going to be like, I want to do the facial hair. I need the money. I want the full, you know, service. And if someone says they got sick in your shop, how, how, how do you prove that? And if they say, oh, people work one day in and the next person, no one can afford to pay their bills off of half a staff paying half the bills. That's just not realistic. It's just not going to work. And I see companies trying to give you plastic to put on the armrests and the chairs and all this stuff. So some people service a hundred people a week. You're going to put a hundred pieces of plastic on the chair, one on the chair, three pieces, one on, the, one on this arm, one on that arm and on the back in between every customer and not being realistic. Um, it's disturbing me to see that everybody's trying to make money off this pandemic everybody's just trying to find a way that they can make a buck off this pandemic and in my opinion it's just disturbing me so hey just some ideas sunday sermon rona fallout international zone mega millions love is love life is life Loyalty is priceless. Peace.